Hi all, welcome to Three Kandaris. So today we are here with an informative session regarding aptitude test in Ireland. We had been getting lots of inquiries regarding aptitude test scenarios, training, etc. So today we are going to explain regarding one of the aptitude test scenarios, uh, which is very important. Uh, so stay tuned with us. So today we are going to do urine analysis. So urine analysis is a latest scenario that has been added to the aptitude test uh, examination in Ireland. So we'll see how to perform urine analysis. First of all, you have to give a bottle to a patient to collect the urine sample. So while you collect the urine sample, you need to give few instructions to the patient. And the type of sample that we collect usually is called the midstream urine. It can be catheter specimens as well in which the patient does not have to do much and it is the nurse who collects the catheter specimen. So if you're asking a patient to collect the sample, usually we ask them to take a midstream urine. A midstream urine is something in which a patient goes to the toilet, cleans the urinary area very well and then dry and then you ask the patient to pass out a bit of urine then hold and then collect the urine sample whenever the required sample is done then the patient can pass out the rest of the urine so that means the amount of urine that is passed in between the stream is collected so i have instructed a patient to give me a sample of urine i hand over the bottle to the patient so while i received the bottle from the patient i should never receive it with bare hands, I should be wearing a gloves. And when I wear the gloves and I receive the bottle of urine from the patient, I should make sure that I put a label on the bottle so that the urine doesn't get mixed up with somebody else's. Because we always perform the urine analysis in a, in a sluice room or it's called a utility area. So there can be many urine samples at the same time. So in order to avoid confusion and wrong results, we have to put a name label on top of the bottle. So this is a urine analysis reagents strip bottle. So this is a urine analysis reagents strip bottle. So what are we doing the urine analysis for? We are doing the analysis in order to find out if there is anything abnormal in the urine. So before we do that, we need to visually analyze the urine sample. So as you can see, this the color of the urine. And then when you turn around, you can also understand the consistency of the urine, whether it is concentrated and thick or it is a normal consistency. Then you have to look into if there is any particles or sediments present. So at the moment, this urine sample has no sediments. It is very clear. So this is the visual inspection of urine. We also need to know the order of the urine. If the patient has a urinary infection, which is very bad, as soon as you receive the sample itself, you will feel the order of the urine. If not so, when you open the bottle, you'll be able to feel it. So now, I have received the urine sample here. And from the reagent strip box, I collected, I mean, I took one of the sample sticks here, reagent strips here, and I have placed it. 
the main thing that you have to understand is once you touch the urine bottle you're not supposed to touch the reagent strip bottle with the same hand in it is in order to avoid contamination of the strips now i'm going to open the urine sample bottle And I have my reagent strip here already ready for test. I am going to dip the strip into the bottle but I am not going to do it with this hand because I don't want to contaminate this hand. So now I am going to transfer the strip into my contaminated hand and dip it so that every single agent gets dipped onto the urine. As soon as I dip it, I leave it on a tissue paper and then straight away I'm closing it so why do I leave it on a tissue paper is because if I hold it straight upright the urine starts dipping downwards and the reagent get mixed up and the same way if I hold it downwards the urine will start dipping downwards and the reagent will get mixed up so in order to avoid that, you put it straight flat on a tissue paper. Now my this hand is considered to be the contaminated hand. So I'm not touching the bottle with this hand. So I hold the bottle with this hand. And now we are going to analyze what is present in the urine. So how do we check it? We check it in relation with the particulars that are given on the bottle. So you can see there is glucose, bilirubin, ketones, specific gravity, blood, pH, protein, urobilinogen, nitrites and leukocytes. So it starts from downwards that is the glucose which has to be analyzed in 30 seconds after dipping into the urine and as you go upwards it reaches to leukocytes where it will be nearly 120 seconds after the dipping of reagent in the urine. So here you can see there is a white marking at the bottom of the bottle and similar white marking can be seen on the strip as well. So that means that is the starting point. So there next you go into the first ingredient. So that is the glucose. So usually a negative color will be light green and if the glucose is positive then the color will go into brown and you can see there it can be trace 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus or 4 plus. It depends upon the amount of glucose that is present in the urine. Usually it is seen in patients who have diabetes who have had already had a glucose infusion. Uh, the patients with high blood sugars during pregnancies that is gestational diabetes so these are the patients in which glucose would be high the next one is bilirubin so bilirubin is checked in the 30 seconds time period itself and the colorless light a kind of uh, what you call cream color and it goes into a skin color a flesh color if you check with the reagent here it is a kind of a cream color to a yellowish color here so that means there is no bilirubin in it so previously we checked glucose in which glucose was negative now bilirubin is also negative next you go into ketones so ketones also it shows negative if the color is fade but it can go up to dark maroon if it is 4 plus so it starts with trace plus 1 2 plus 3 plus and dark maroon is 4 plus so here the strip shows something maybe you can say a 3 plus and but not a dark maroon. Then a specific gravity in which the dark green shows 1 and the lighter version shows 1.030. So if you compare with the strip here you can see the color comes nearly 1.015 or 1.020. So we spoke about bilirubin. Bilirubin is usually positive if the patient has any liver or gallbladder problems and ketones are usually seen if the patient is fasting or has fever, vomiting, diabetic ketoacidosis, type 1 
diabetes or there can be false positive results from some medications. Then next we have specific gravity. So you, you might be noticing that as it goes, the time differs. When it reached to ketone, it is 40 seconds. Now when we reach to specific gravity, it is 45 seconds. So as the time goes, our uh, variance also differ. Specific gravity normal value is 1.002 to 1.035. So 1.002 to 1.035 is a normal specific gravity. Specific gravity increases in dehydration and specific gravity decreases when there is fluid overload, diabetes insipidus, renal failure, hypercalcemia and hypokalemia. Next is blood. So blood also starts with plain yellow which is negative and if there is yellow with green dots it is trace and then 2 plus and then it goes on and 3 plus is the very darkest of green. So here you can see there is yellow with spots of green in between. So we can say the presence of blood in this sample is around here. So blood is usually present in the urine if a patient has urinary tract infection any renal calculi, benign prostatic hypertrophy, renal diseases, polycystic diseases, glomerul glomerulonephritis, any tumors or sometimes also during menstruation. Next is pH. pH is checked at around 60 seconds time from the dipping of strip into the urine and it starts from 5.0 to 8.5 and you can see the color gradient is from orange to green. So here you can see the color and you compare with the color on the strip with the bottle. So if the value is 7, that means the pH is neutral. Anything less than 7 is acidic and anything more than 7 is alkaline. So normal pH falls between 4.5 and 8. The pH is usually lower, that means the urine is acidic. If the patient has diabetic ketoacidosis or if the patient is starving, if there is any potassium depletion in the body or renal or bladder calculi. pH can be high, that means the urine can be alkaline if the patient has urinary tract infection, vomiting, if the patient is taking any antacids, high protein diet, more of vegetables, citrus fruits, dairy products and also the pH can be high if you leave the urine sample outside for a long time. Next comes urobilinogen. Urobilinogen also the color you can see is a kind of peach color at the start and it can reach up to pinkish. So you compare the color of the uh, bottle with the color on the strip and you say what is the result of the urine and it happens around 60 seconds. Urobilinogen is positive in patients who have liver and blood disorders like hepatitis, sickle cell disorders, gallstones, or maybe can cancer of the pancreas. There are several other disease spectrum for all these to happen, but I'm just listing few of them. Then we have the nitrites. So nitrites is positive uh, during the 60 second time. The negative is cream color and anything other than that is positive. So nitrites is positive if the patient has a urinary tract infection. And finally comes the leukocytes. So leukocytes, by the time you read leukocytes, it will be 120 seconds. So the negative is a kind of light ash to creamy color and then positive is purple color. So it can be up to 3 plus. Leukocytes are present in the urine if there is any inflammation, urinary tract infection or it could also be due to some drugs that can cause false results. But it is also a sign to say that patient can have a urinary tract infection but not definite. The presence of nitrates is definitely urinary tract infection but if there is leukocytes still you have to rehydrate the patient sufficiently enough to avoid urinary tract infection. Now I have completed uh, my urine analysis. I am leaving my bottle back here. Still I have not cross contaminated between the finger, uh, hands and the gloves. So I have, I don't need my hand to remain any more clean. So what I will do is before I contaminate it, I place my bottle back into the box and keep it safely. 
and then I can dispose the urine sample and my strip. Usually we can have a kidney dish or straight away you can put it into the yellow bin. So I can dispose this in a yellow bin which is the blood and infectious uh, body fluid bin. Few other important points to be considered while performing urine analysis is that this is not a definitive result to diagnose a patient's disorders with regards to urine. It is only giving you a clue. So if it shows that there is signs of if the leukocyte is positive, if the nitrites are positive, so it shows that the patient has signs of urinary infection. So in order to treat the patient effectively, you have to send the sample for culture and sensitivity. And once the culture and sensitivity is done, it will show you what kind of organism is inside in the urine and what kind of antibiotic to which the patient will be sensitive so that the organism can be killed. A very common question asked for the aptitude test is if you have an elderly patient, especially a geriatric patient in a nursing home setup or a rehabilitative setup who shows confusion, signs of confusion, what could you look into? So one of the reasons for confusion among the geriatric is urinary tract infection and you have to do a urine analysis straight away because urinary tract infection causes confusion among geriatrics. So you do a urine dipstick test or a urine analysis. If you find that there is nitrites or leukocytes or blood positive in it, then you have to rehydrate the patient for definite and also inform your GP that the patient has such and such in the urine, send a sample for culture and sensitivity and probably the GP will start the patient on an antibiotic for a wide coverage until the result comes. Hope this video has been informative to you all, those who are preparing for the aptitude test for nurses in Ireland. If you have any queries, please put it in the comment box. We'll be here again, coming with more informative sessions with regards to aptitude test. So hope you will all tune, stay tuned with Trikandaris. Subscribe to Trikandaris who are seeing this video for the first time. Please press the bell icon so that you will get all the notifications whenever we upload the uh, informative videos or whatever videos you would like to watch. So hope this session was really useful for you all. So thank you so much. Three Kandaris signing off for the moment. Thank you.